Big Mike here with He's Entertainment. Today's episode, we got Eric Ciccoloni, University of Michigan Wolverine and New York Ranger draft pick. You like what we're doing, Michigan? Let's go. Hit the subscribe button. Hi, I'm Eric Ciccolini from the University of Michigan ice hockey team, and I'm a New York Rangers pro- uh, prospect. And I'm coming on. I only touch greatness. Podcast. Looking for the most beers on tap? Great steaks, great staff. Head over to the John B. Pub. We got the best beers, steaks, chicken wings, nachos in town. Come see us at the John B. Pub. The John B. Pub, the best bar in town. Come sign up for our football pool. Say hey, St. you. <laughs> The number one sports podcast in Vancouver with Ryan Hayes and Big Mike. Brady at center. Now it's Morgan with Ciccolini. Morgan swings it wide in front to Ciccolini. He scores! Michigan with the early strike. Brian Hayes and Big Mike are taking over the podcast scene in Vancouver. Get down or lay down. This is I Only Touch Greatness Podcast with Ryan Hayes and Big Mike. We are going live. Great, now I have to edit that. Hey, Eric. Hey, Hey. buddy. How are you? Good, good, guys. Ryan Hayes and Big Mike. We lost it, Eric. Touch Greatness Podcast. Hey, Eric, uh, thank you very much uh, for taking the time for us today. We really appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for having me. I'm Ryan, by the way, in the Michigan jersey for you. (laughs) Yeah, I like that. (laughs) Yeah, it's a beauty. Got the Quinn Hughes on the back. And uh, Big Mike. And I'm the one that's been talking to you. And that's Big Mike, yeah. Okay. Uh, Eric, so uh, we're just going to get started here. We're just going to ask you a bunch of questions about hockey. We're obviously fans of yours, and uh, yeah, we'll get started. Uh, born in Ontario, uh, what was childhood like, and uh, when did you start playing hockey? Well, I started playing when I was like four or five years old, and then just started playing house league from there and played in Vaughn and grew up playing minor hockey league in Vaughn for the Vaughn Kings for uh, six years, six, seven years, and then just playing like playing against a bunch of good players like like so like Jack Hughes, Phil Tomasino, Michael Vukajevic, like all those good players and then going on to play junior A in the OJHL with the Toronto Junior Canadians. And also played with like Jack McBain on that team, which was a pretty good experience for me and then now I'm Michigan. Yeah, you led into you led into my question there. I was gonna say uh, you played your junior with that uh, Toronto Junior Canadians. There's a lot of good players that come from that organization. Why do you think that is? Um, I think just development and I think the location of it as well. Just they have a really good, I guess, facility there and rank where it's pretty. It's in in the middle of Toronto and good location for a bunch of players. And I think the system of just developing players like like Jake Wallman, uh, Jack McBain. And like those two guys, and then I felt like playing with McBain would be a good chance of me, I guess, getting drafted or becoming a better player. And I guess it's found the place as well. Yeah. What's one of the challenges you've come across in getting to where you are today? Um, I think one of the challenges, like maybe just growing up, wasn't always like I guess the biggest guy or the strongest guy, but I like try to just use my be to my advantage and I think just using that all the way up and even with even in juniors like playing against older guys and not really knowing what to expect but expect but just believing in my abilities and staying confident and I think that's what uh really guided me to where I am now 
Okay. Um, any nicknames and what's your favorite jersey number and why? Uh, my nickname is like Chicky or Chick because of my last name. And then uh, favorite jersey number. When I growing up, I wore 88 every year for uh, when I was little. I guess because my name is Eric. Eric Lindros was on the Leafs, so yeah. that's why I chose it. And so I just he was eighty eight, so I chose the same. Yeah, Lindros is a beauty. Back Definitely a good day. choice. And now you wear nine. Is there any uh, any relevance with the number nine? Yeah, really good. Uh, so number nine, I wore that because of Gordy Howe, and uh, Gordy Howe would come to visit me or visit my grandfather whenever he was in Toronto. And like stay at his house. So growing up with him and then being in Michigan close to Detroit, I thought I'd pick number nine. Wow, that's pretty cool. That's Not very many people can say that. I had Gordy House sleep over my no. grandparents' house. Like, wow. Yeah. yeah, did you pull out the futon for him or what what happened there? <laughs> <laughs> the little guest room. He uh, would stay in there. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, do you have a favorite movie about sports? Oh, I I like kicking and screaming. I think that's probably my favorite one. Okay. That's that's good for some laughs. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, who do you mirror your game after? Or try and play like. Um, I think the guy I've been looking up to like most recently is like a David Pasternak, just because of his like speed and shooting abilities, and just playing both ends of the ice, and I think he's just a great player to look after. Yeah, he's a hell of a player. Um, do you have a favorite sports hero? Um, what do you mean? Like, what do you mean by that? Like, who was hero? your player that you looked up to growing up? Really, like, for me, it was, it was um, always Pavel Burry or Wayne Gretzky or Theo Fleury. Or... Uh, I get. I think I'd have to say probably Matt Sundin. Okay. Just because. Okay. Always watching the Leafs, and he was always the guy, and they weren't really good, but he was always good, and. I think that's someone I'd always admire, always look after. Yeah, and he did. He did come out to Vancouver after that. Yeah, yeah he for did one year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, a year we're too, that we're too happy Canucks, about that, but no. I was just gonna say uh, a year that the Canucks fans definitely want to forget. <laughs> were they? How uh, were the Canucks that year? That good or mm, not really? I think they. No, was, re- I think that was the rebuild before the Sedin. So okay. So that yeah, was- it wasn't wasn't very good. We always uh, the Canucks have the tendency to bring in guys when it when it's too late, like him and <laughs> like Mark like Mark Messier. Yeah, <laughs> just ruins the chemistry. Uh, if you could sit down for dinner with someone famous that are alive, who would it be? Um, I think sitting with like Tiger Woods would be someone probably I'd want to talk about just because of maybe me being a bit younger and not really seeing like him in his prime and just like seeing him now and still like how he's still like pretty good and just wondering what he did to get that good and how he did what he did basically. Yeah. The guy's the goat. Yeah. For a reason. (laughs) Um, We'll take you back to your, probably your biggest day in your career. Um, 2019, you were drafted 205th overall to the New York Rangers. Um, and you were in Vancouver. What did you think of Vancouver, the city? Yeah, it was really nice, really great city, especially now that it was warm in the summer or yeah. in June, so it was really nice. And I I was there before for the Olympics in Vancouver oh, and cool. saw some games of Canada. So I've been there once, but that was a long time ago, and coming back was uh, something pretty cool. Yeah, and that was in February too, so it was like freezing cold back in the Olympics. Yeah, I just remember it rained every day. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's cold because you're wet, I guess. But I remember standing yeah. out in the streets and it was going crazy in the downtown Vancouver. Awesome. What was it like? Uh, what was it like hearing your name and uh, walking across that stage? Yeah, it was something obviously really special. You, something you always dream about, and I think I was just just so happy with all the hard work I've put in and getting my name called is like something you dream of, and now just the hard work keeps coming and you just got to keep working harder to play in the NHL, obviously. I'm going to go with the draft question, Mike. Uh, yep. If you were an animal, what would you be? Um, I think like a, maybe like a cheetah. 
Just because okay. I'm, I think because I'm fast on the ice and they're fast, the crits are prey, and I think that's something I try to be all the time and just be fast. Okay. okay. Um, I don't know if my stats are right here or not, but uh, your grandfather, he's a scout for the Rangers as well, is he not? Or was? He was, yeah, not anymore. When I think when Phyllis Zito was playing back then, that's when he was a scout. So he was with oh. the Rangers at that time. For, yeah, but oh, a long okay. time ago. Okay, okay. Still pretty cool to go to that team. That must yeah. make it a little more unique. Yeah, it did. Pretty cool. Do you have a favorite road barn or stadium? Um, I guess the best. I think playing, playing in like Penn State was pretty cool. At least last year with fans. Like probably the loudest or one of the loudest. And it's a pretty good, pretty good sheet and great facility there too. I always love asking this one because uh, I feel like the one time in your career that you actually get to, uh, or the last time in your career you get to pick where you're going to go and you pick the University of Michigan. Could you uh, let us know why? Um, I just thought because of the tradition and also because I know guys that have been here in the past, like Camilleri, Di Giuseppe, Hyman, Cogliano, and they're all from like same area as me in Toronto. And I think it was just the best spot for me and not too far from home, which it was a plus in having my family come watch games, and I just thought that was the best choice for me. And definitely, fact. yeah, it's our it's definitely our favorite team for both yeah. of us in the NCAA. Not even close. Yeah, <clears throat> there's tons of guys on that. We've had guys from what that will have up or go to school with you. Right? Yeah, Ma- yeah, Maddie Beniers, uh, Tom- mm-hmm. Thomas Bordalo, uh, Owen Power, Jacob Truscott. Yeah, a bunch of the bunch of the good blue guys. Yeah. Uh, t- take me back to your first NCAA goal. So it was in Wisconsin and it was the second night of like the double header. It was actually first shift of the first, my first shift of the game. And, uh, my teammate Luke Morgan came down the wing and basically just like passed it in front through the slot. And I just shot in five hole and I like didn't even know it went in, but <laughs> Like, after a couple, like, seconds, I celebrated, stopped celebrating to see if it went in or not, and then figured out it went in, like, made a loud scream on the ice, so. Right on, right react. on. Yeah. Do you stall the puck? Yeah, I do. Yeah, it's here at home with me. Since you're talking about selling, we might as well hit you with that one. What's your go-to selly? Um, Usually, I just like to, like, sweep the ice when I selly. Okay. One like that is usually my go-to. Okay. okay. I always go with the uh, you can't see me, John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't score very much, in the NHL, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's beer league. <laughs> okay. Hey, what color? Uh, you got a favorite color, Gatorade? Uh, I think the red one. That's, okay. the, that's the one I'll go to and use and drink. Okay. Um, any pregame rituals or routines? Um, I guess getting to the rink, like usually get rink two hours before. I'll take my stick up in the stands and do some like stick handling stuff as well. And then I always try to like after warm, like off ice warm ups, like always have a banana before I start getting dressed. Okay. Just, okay. Just Ryan, I can't. Ryan, I can't remember who it was. I think it was someone from Sweden that eats a banana between every period, right? And before the game? Yeah, I forget. Yeah, I can't remember who that was, but we were both like, what? That's a lot of bananas. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what about the... Uh, if there is a contest and you're going to win a $1,000 prize and you had to sing one karaoke song, what song are you singing? Oh. Uh. Um, probably a Drake song. I don't know. I like I like to listen to him. Um, I'm trying to think what song. Another maybe good like Canadian over. kid. Yeah, maybe like "Over" by Drake. I don't know. Okay, this is okay. one that's stuck in my head all the time. So. Second part to that question: Who of your teammates do you think's the best singer? Would be the best. Singer. <laughs> would, would would be oh. the best singer. Every team's got that guy that sings in the shower. Like, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Maybe uh, 
probably my roommate's on a bad like Keaton Pearson, his name is. Not a bad singer. I think he's okay. think. Okay, he's a, okay. He's a guy to sing. Okay. And then you must hear him sing at home all the time then if he's your roommate. <laughs> yeah, once in a while, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh who's the best player you've played with and against? Um I guess I guess growing up I played with Jack Hughes a bunch in the summertime, so he was probably one of the best I've played with. And then say so yeah, I've also played against him too, but um I'm trying to think who else. I guess playing against Caulfield was pretty good the last couple of years. Yeah. Man, and that guy can score. And what he's been able to do. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Who's, uh, back who's to the, the Gordy. Ha- oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Who's the team DJ? Uh, Nick Blankenberg is our team DJ. Okay. Okay. Oh. Um, back to the Gordy Howe thing. Did you ever get to skate with him or play any hockey with him mm, or anything? No, I wasn't able to skate with him, but. Like in my in my grandfather's basement, he'd like sometimes like teach me how to shoot. Or the thing I remember is like to flick your wrist over your when you take a snapshot, and that was something I'll probably always remember. Okay, okay. What's three reasons you like being a part of a team sport? I think just a couple reasons. Yeah, for sure. One just making like the friendships and. There's so many guys I've met over the years and just talking to them all the time. And I think it's crazy how, like, you know, guys playing all over the place and you can text them for anything and I think stuff like that. And then I think hockey just makes you a better person and learning how to deal with different things to go on in life and meeting different people all the time. And I think those are probably the two things of why it's so great to play a team sport. Okay. Definitely good choices. Um, have you tried the Michigan or lacrosse goal in a game yet? No, not in a game, but uh, in practices, I've like tried it just when no one's in that or when I'm fooling around. But no, it's not the not the easiest thing to do. But no, never in a game yet. That was we- when I first fell in love with Michigan. Of course, was back then because yeah. I, I I try I'm out there at warm up trying to pick the puck up every day. <laughs> They were doing it and throwing it like lacrosse. Even from the blue line, I'm throwing it at the net and stuff just like lacrosse. But, yeah, just the first time i ever seen that is mind-blowing. Love Michigan ever since and that move. Yeah, I'm sure the, we guys, have, uh, we have... the guys on our team, I think, will do it at least once, like Johnson or Bordelow. They've tried it this year, but didn't work. But I'm sure they'll get it once. How good is Kent Johnson? He's, he's, from, he's, he's just... He's from right yeah, around from here, right? Here. So yeah, just his just his skill, and I think the best thing about him is like his body position when he gets the puck, and he's not that big, but his edges are so good, and he's just able to keep guys off the puck and protect it, and makes no like no look passes all the time, or he's just a really skilled player, and I think that that what makes him really good. That's good. Absolutely, That's our, yeah. hometown, our hometown boy. Yeah, I could definitely see him doing it. That's for sure. And uh, we have a we have a Canadian kid or Vancouver kid out here too, a phenom. He's uh, 15 years old, playing the dub right now. Connor Bedard, and he just tried it last week. Did it? I didn't see it. Did he? Did he score or no? No, he hit the cro- he hit the, hit the post, crossbar, crossbar. But he's but he but he's leading the WHL in points as a 15 year old. Yeah, I heard he's supposed to be unbelievable. I've been he, looking at some of his highlights and stuff. So yeah, yeah he's so good. What, he's good. What are your uh, future plans and maybe ne- plans for next season yeah i think next season obviously i would try to have a bigger year than this year and just be in, more impactful and be more of a leader on my team and i think we'll have a really good team and hoping to win a national championship or winning a big 10 championship as well and i think those are the goals that we can have and obviously accomplish yeah, you guys are stacked. Like we interview a lot of pros, we interview a lot of prospects, like high end, high end, top prospects. And like, I swear, like almost every third or fourth one, they're like, "We're going to Michigan," and I'm like, "What?" Like this team is going to be stacked. Yeah, we'll have a really good team next year. What colors your stick tape? I use black stick tape. Okay. Any uh, hidden talents? Um. Not really. No, I don't think I have any. Okay. If you could play another sport, what would it be? Uh, 
Probably soccer. I grew up playing that in the summers and not, and uh, I think that was something I would probably try to play higher level of play. Especially with the strong, uh, that's Italian last name too, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <That's why. laughs> exactly. <laughs> what's your uh, go-to song before games or what's your pump-up song? Um, I think that that song I said by Drake over okay. one I listen to all the time. Okay. Um, can you describe your game and uh, playing style and uh, – what aspects of your game do you feel like you need to learn or grow? I think me as a player, just a fast player and really creative offensively and also play good defensively. And I think I try to contribute at both ends of the ice. And then I think things I need to improve on is probably just getting better body position in the D zone and offensive zone. And I think obviously comes with getting stronger and getting bigger. I think that's something I can obviously work on. Do you have a dream venue that you want to play in? I mean, you're going your home arena is shit going to be Madison Square Garden, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, um, I think playing in Vegas would be probably cool. Okay. I've never been to Vegas, obviously, but like seeing the atmosphere that they've had and then the, that playoff run too, I think it'd be something cool, somewhere cool to play at. Yeah, absolutely. Their their like pregame uh, stuff is just crazy. I I really want yeah. to check that out. Yeah, which would be awesome if what I can't wait to go down and see the Canucks in Vegas and the Seahawks in Vegas on the Sunday, which, yeah. which now can happen. That would pretty awesome yeah. idea there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'd be cool. Hey, uh, Eric, I just want to uh, thank you very much uh, today for taking the time for us and coming on. We're big fans of yours, and uh, we know you're going to go far in hockey, and we can't wait to cheer you on for the rest of your career, my man. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Ryan. If you're looking for a mug, perhaps a hoodie, head on over to IOnlyTouchGreatness.com. Looking for the most beers on tap? Great steaks, great staff. Head over to the John B. Pub. We got the best beers, steaks, chicken wings, nachos in town. Come see us at the John B. Pub. The John B. Pub, the best bar in town. Come sign up for our football pool. Say hey, St. you.